Okay, guys, we're here today with John Danner, a huge honor for me, Brian, and the uh, and guys, uh, John's just showing uh, the third part of the Ageless Jiu Jitsu series, which is all about the Gi Borno game. So, John, I, I love it how we split this series in yeah. no Gi, top and Borno, Gi, top and Borno. So, um, what, what I've found coaching over the years, Bernardo, is that um, there, there is a, a kind of a generational. Uh, split in jiu-jitsu. Uh, as a general rule, my younger athletes, the ones who compete more, almost all prefer training no-gi. I think it's fair to say that professional jiu-jitsu is heading uh, more towards the, yeah. uh, There are some exceptions to the rule, but that, that is, it has been the current trend for a long time now. Um, but many of the older athletes prefer training in the gi. With you. And uh, so I, I, uh, I put out an age of jiu-jitsu for uh, no gi, but I also want to do one with a gi as well because it, uh, there was a lot of requests for that. People say, "Hey, I do ninety percent of my training in the gi. Can you yep. put out something in that regard?" So, um, one of the big themes of this video is that many of the moves which uh, my students specialize in are already very good uh, without the gi, but can be amplified or improved through the use with the gi just by a few minor modifications and grips. These grips are easy to get; they're easy to remember. And they really do take already good moves and bump their effectiveness up, you know, 10, 15, 25%. And, uh, and that's a big deal in a competitive sport. So um, we've been running over a whole bunch of uh, elements with regards to technique. And in addition, we also talked a lot about strategy and tactics in this video. Um, I don't believe it's enough for older or uh, athletically compromised people to just have it. Uh, a technical element to their game. They also have to have a strategic or tactical yeah, element where they, where they embed the techniques that they have in a set of tactics which gives them a better chance against more athletic opponents. So we talk a lot about that in terms of, um, you know, from bottom position, what are the right tactics to use when you feel that everyone's faster than you, everyone's fitter than you, everyone can go longer, they're faster, they're more explosive. Okay, show me some technique, but also tell me what I'm supposed to do in terms of tactics here as well. So we covered that a lot in the video. Um, but uh, on a technical level, uh, a lot of it has to do with uh, simple modifications to grip to make already good moves very, very great. As in the previous videos, the big emphasis is on forming body connections to your opponent. When you feel your opponents are faster, uh, more explosive than you, uh, you always want to connect the most uh, surface area of your body to your opponent's body. And this immediately slows the match down. Suddenly. Uh, if you can slow things down to a, to a level where it, it uh, suits the older athletes, suddenly older athletes can become very competitive. The gi helps us a lot. The friction goes up a lot. Yep, the agree. grips are much more resilient, and you can do a much. It's much easier for older athletes to slow down uh, a, a very fast younger opponent with a gi than without a gi. So uh, we focus on this a lot. Yeah, no, that makes sense. And the, anytime I see an, for example, if you go to watch like. Words Masters, and you watch any adults tournament, the, the, the rhythm is completely different. Like yes. the, the adult tournaments, they go upside down, yeah. they do pretty polos, this and that, they do knee cut, black drags. And then the older guys, it's more like that old school jiu jitsu, yes. like close guard, yes. half guard. You, see, like, half they pass from the knees, guard, yeah. and the, yeah. so. Yeah, uh, it's, it's very noticeable. Yeah. Um, actually, we were both at uh, the recent Pan Ams where Nicholas had such an amazing yeah. performance. And, yeah. uh, interestingly, uh, they they had the, the the young athletes, the competitive athletes, uh, competing right next to the yep, uh, yep. masters division, including going all the way up to very advanced masters. Yep. And uh, you're absolutely right. It was absolutely striking how you know the the movements we most associate with modern gi jiu jitsu were just almost entirely absent. And it's not because of skill; it's just it has to do with body mobility. Yep. You know, the guys know the moves. They they literally watch Nicholas and the others perform them in front of them. They know yeah. what they're supposed to be doing, but the, uh, their, their body is better suited. When you lack mobility, the body is generally happier performing the more basic moves of the sport. You just have to perform them at a higher level. No, that makes sense. But John, can you demonstrate some examples? Yeah, yeah. I thought um, uh, it, when we did the Nogi uh, uh, version of this, we did a lot of work out of half guard, yeah. and um, a big part of it was uh, uh, sweeping our opponent from half guard. And I wanted to go over in this one, we went over some of the same sweeps, but with gi modifications, but also brought in other elements too. When you put a jacket on, you can you can get older athletes to perform moves that would be quite difficult for them to, 
to perform if they didn't have the D on. So for example, single legs and double legs. Now, normally we associate single legs and double legs with the standing position, and even out of half guard, it can be it can be very physical trying to finish a single or a double leg. But when you put a gi on, you can really make things work in your yeah. favor. So, from the situation, the difference. Yeah. When we work with a gi, okay, we're always looking to take our training partner's uh, uh, jacket out and from here create, uh, as it were, a rope-like effect with the lapel of the jacket all the way down here by the skirt of the jacket. Once we get underneath our training partner, from here we're going to take our arm. I can't hit my arm here around the waist for this. We need our wrist where the buttocks meet the hamstring. And we're going to feed that lapel all the way through and feed it across to our hand and get a good grip just in like so. Now, normally from here we're obsessed with the idea of hooking onto our training partner's leg. But because you've used your training partner's jacket in this way, we can start to uh, uh, re relinquish this. There's no need for us to, to connect so uh, so strongly with our leg here. We can take that outside hook away, and from here we can start coming up to our base. If our opponent sprawls, that grip is not going anywhere. It also enables me to free my other hand. Normally in single legs, we're locking our hands. No need here. No matter how strongly Brian sprawls, I'm never going to lose this grip to a sprawl. Now from this position, we're going to start coming up to our base. Once we come up to our base, we have that free hand, we're going to use it as a post on the floor. I'm going to touch my ear to my training partner's hip, and I'm going to start putting my opponent down. Make a strong base, sprawl. From here, we're going to take our ear into our training partner, we're going to walk him backwards, and we're going to expose our training partner's ankle. What's the ankle exposure for? We grab right there at the heel. Don't grab anywhere, grab the heel. It's a perfect handle. And then from here, we're going to take that heel up to our hip, and just sit this guy down. It's a perfect sit down. It's a modification of an old wrestling move, the, the, the cut back, which works perfectly with this gi grip. It makes it so much easier to perform. Now from here, you could just go straight in and cover your training partner's hips. You could also shelf your training partner's leg and turn him towards him and come up on top. The idea is you want to create a standing run, a situation where we grab a hold of our training partner. When he goes to scroll back, this grip is just so strong and enables us to keep a good upright posture. If my hands lock in here and I get stretched out, that's when older athletes do very poorly in this position. But when we come in here, we lock up on our man and he goes to scroll his leg back, we're never going to lose this grip. Okay? And if we can get our opponent into that exposed ankle position down to a hip, just catch that foot, he's coming down every single time. Okay, so it's a fairly standard half guard position, which we looked at a lot, no gi, working like so. And from these kinds of positions, we saw so many ways to sweep people from here, the classic well-known methods. But with the jacket, we go through and we use this specialized lapel grip, and we go in and lock. When Brian goes to pull away from us now, it's awfully, awfully difficult. We can still hit many of our favorite moves from this position, but the single leg is one of the very best. And we don't necessarily need to have our opponent's leg hooked. We can let it go. But that grip is so strong, you can hold it very, very easily and come up to our backs. Now from here, we use that cutback method to expose our training partner's ankle. Then we just catch, and just pull that foot all the way up to the hip. And then from here, cover our training partner's hips and start walking forward for the pen. So this is a good example of taking a fairly standard half guard position in the sport and taking it into single leg territory, but a single leg that requires almost zero athleticism. Because of the lapel. Because of the lapel. Oh. And um, uh, you, this is one of those moves where you can hit it more or less in slow motion. Um, normally single leg finishes, you gotta move. You can't, you don't have to be the fastest guy in the world, but you, you can't delay too much either. From here, once we get that grip in place, you can take your time in these, these kinds of positions. He can go to move around, etc., etc., and from here you can threaten his balance, make things tough for him, and then just start coming up to our base. When he tries to work from here, it's so difficult for him. Then we just drive across and get that position. Once the ankle's exposed, it's so hard for him to recover, and so easy for us to put everything down. From a scramble position like this, even if my opponent was so athletically gifted from here that he sprung back up to his feet, he's still got that same grip. You can just repeat the process as many times as it takes to cover his hips and go forward into your pants.
Yeah. Oh, Joe, I love that if you could this example because this was my entire life competing. <laughs> it's like I would always try to chase the lapel and could and then uh, probably have your so The key time. element to take away your opponent's athleticism to take a seat position down is to take your opponent's right foot to your right hip and vice versa. Yeah. The heel thing was new to me. Yeah, if you can, it's a perfect handle. Okay, you can yeah. anywhere else, it's not perfect, but yeah, it's just no, that makes handle. sense. And you can apply that for no gear as well. Yes, um, yeah. but. But you don't have a lapel, yeah, so yeah. You're, it's going to be harder. You're doing a trade off. You can still hit yeah. it. You can still hit it, but it will it. require yeah. a little extra. No, you're right. You're right. Whereas once you get that lapel, the work rate is very, very yeah. low. Yeah. And once you get that foot on that cross hip, for your opponent to heist and get up from here, it's going to be tough because his foot's in place. If you let the foot go, that's when fast athletic people get away from us. But yeah. if we work. And that's done. Standard start position. Get a hold of our chain partner's lapel and lock it in. It's going to be awfully, awfully difficult for an opponent to get away from a position like this. You always start, of course, by threatening balance and getting this guy working and basing out with his hand. Hand. And then from here, you feel like you, you can't quite take him over. And then just a simple change of direction. As he goes to recover his balance, we're in a position to start coming up on this guy. Now from here, I want my head coming across that far hip and just walking across. It takes nothing. He's at a full sprawl. And then from here, we just walk, 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 and expose that heel. Once the heel's exposed, it goes across the hip. And from this position here, it's just so hard for this poor guy to recover. Your head is higher than his head. Your hips are higher than his hips. And from here, it's an easy walk down into a pin, or at least half guard top, and you can pass from there. So, the, the video is full of examples like this. I'm taking moves which are already good, but taking them to that next level just through the you use of the You add some gear. lapel, you add some... Yeah, so you, yeah. add, you add connection. Oh, yeah. Okay. And the connections with the gi are so much more robust than they are without the gi. Okay, the, these lapel grips are just so resilient. Standing, swallowing. From here, it can be hard work to stay connected on a good, talented opponent from yeah. here. And as my head gets goes down, my body gets extended, it can be really tough. But it's just so much easier. He's falling when you just lock in like so. Yeah. It's, even with a full wizard in place. Okay, it's so hard for him now to apply his body weight to us. It will be easy for us to start off with yeah. people getting their foot exposed and put them down to the mat. It's just so much more robust. Um, and unlike no gi, no matter how slippery or sweaty the guy gets towards the end of the match. The friction remains. If anything, the friction increases. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Cotton becomes wet, so it becomes easier and easier. Yeah. Well, Joel, so if you had to create a foundation here for an older uh, athlete to play borrow game with the gear, would you say it's half guard? I would say it's a combination. Half guard would be the foundation, but we've got to be realistic too, Bernardo. We can't just say, I'm only going to work half guard because okay. the opponent's okay. going to be doing everything he can to prevent that. Yeah. Right. So the, the philosophy I have is, Half guard is best. Yeah. Close guard is probably going to be second best. Okay. Almost, but the, the only okay. exception to that was if, if you have extremely short, thick legs, then it's probably going to be tough for you to do that. But we've got to be realistic too. You have to be able to handle a standing opponent. Okay. Um, if, if I was 19 years old fighting a talented 50 year old, the first thing I would do is stand up the fastest guy. Yep. Yep. I wouldn't come in on my knees on that guy. Yep. Um, so most of the younger, more athletic guys are going to come in past on their feet. So we need a method of getting good connection when they're standing. My two favorites will always be Ashigurami and the X-Guard because these enable you to control the space between your opponent's knees and offset their balance. No. They are relatively easy for older people to use because they don't require any kind of dexterity with your feet. No. As long as your feet are strong, you can get anyone can hold their legs in a position like so, no matter what their age. This is an easy no. position for anybody. Okay, and from here you can be effective. What we did do is modify some of the sweeps so there's less emphasis on getting up and driving people over, which is a yeah. bit of a challenge for yeah. other athletes. It was more about using the sleeve cuffs to yeah. off-balance people. Uh, what we typically find is that very gifted athletic opponents in X-Guard and Ashigurami face out with hands on the floor and it's hard to tilt them over. But we can use sleeve cuff grips that make that very, very difficult for them. So the basic idea is, as much as possible, drag them down into half-guard situations yeah. and cook them in half-guard. If you're getting tired, and you feel the other guy just has, even in half guard, you can't restrain his movement, work to close, close guard. guard. 
If you lose control of them, so if they go into standing position, then favor Ashigurami as an initial connection, and X guard as the tightest connection on a standing opponent to start disrupting their balance. John, can I ask you just to show one example of how you would connect either to the Ashigurami or to the X guard? Absolutely, sure. Um, let's say out of half guard. Four and over player, right? Yeah. Let's say we're working in half guard down here on the floor, and we get to our favorite position just like so, and we feel like we we just we've, we've given it a good honest try we've worked from half guard it's just not working and we want to make a connection to say for example x guard well a good way for us to do that would be to shift from a conventional half guard into a deep half guard situation where we take our legs and come out in this direction here now we just pommel our foot through underneath our training partner and there's our x guard ready to fly and from here so many ways for us to operate out of x guard and start putting people down so this would be a Call the same so halfway to the, to the X guard. And we should be able to go vice versa in both directions. So there's a lot of talk about how to transition uh, between these various guards. But in answer to your first question, I do believe that for older, less athletically gifted people, the, the general best position for them is half guard. Half guard. If you have reasonably long legs, or at least average length legs, then close guard will be uh, a good uh, second place. If you're so short and thick in the legs that close guard is just not your thing, then I would go directly to the next option, which is X guard slash Ashigarami. Good, no, that's awesome. And the Ashigarami, you also create the connection through half guard, or it's yeah, absolutely. Any in case you want yeah, to, absolutely. Let's say, for example, we were in half guard and like so, and from here we go into a knee shield. From any kind of knee shield, we're always got to go in, in transition to okay. the half butterfly. Yeah, from half perfect. butterfly, it's always a simple thing of just turning through. And now, Beautiful. we're right away. Yeah, that's awesome. Ashi no, There's awesome. always a path between them. No, that's awesome. And the, yeah, no, the, this is, this was, I have half guard in mind and close guard. And the, the X guard and the Ashigarami, especially in the greater X lane, if they stand up and kind of like play like a running away yes. game, that would be a yeah, and when, um, one of the big things we touch on is the idea of the collars and the cuffs. Like, Ashi is saying, Ashi Guru, I mean, X guard so much easier, okay? It, it can be tough, you know, in a, in a situation. This is probably the single hardest situation for older athletes. This guy's younger, faster, and he's on his feet. Yep. You're older, slower, and you're sitting on your ass, or yeah. even worse, <laughs> on yeah. your back. And you yeah. feel like he's moving three times faster than you. Yeah. So you've got to form some kind of initial connection. My favorite is always cross collar. That's always the fastest one because the fingers always enter cross much easier than they enter straight. Okay. okay because the fingers, four fingers penetrate right from the start. So any cross grip is always innately faster than straight grips. Okay. Straight grips take time to adjust. Okay, They're much easier in the standing position they are on the ground. Once we go in, my first thing is always pull and get my feet between his knees. Okay. The biggest problem older, slower athletes have is they make connections, the guy connects to your feet, and you just you guys blast right past your legs. So our whole thing is first, you get an initial connection, and you just pull straight inside. Then, it's Ashi Garami, he goes to fight that, but he's fighting your collar as well. And as a result, it's so much easier to get the hands down to the mat. You yeah. still have that collar, you can transfer it to either one of your training partner's sleeve, and it's just a very, very strong thing. Normally, you know, you've got a talented athlete with no gi. This guy gets up, it's a war from here. Okay, you get guys surfing on your legs at world championship level, the sweeps just don't come easy from here. But anytime you have cross collar, it's so much easier to get hands to the mat. Good. Anytime you have cuffs, it's so much easier to control your training partner, roll them through, and end up in top position. Okay, so controlling cross collar and cuffs makes an already good position so much more effective. Right. No, John, like uh, seeing you teaching, I'm almost thinking like the opposite of what everybody always said, like you, you need the gi in order to get good no gi, but learning from you, I almost feel like if you have the foundations of no gi and then you can just add yeah. the grips and the... What I've always found, Bernardo, is that all good jiu-jitsu is control of the body. Okay. And it's easy to focus on controlling the cloth around the body. But controlling the body itself is always okay. the problem. Just see this as cosmetic. So the best people I've ever seen in Jiu Jitsu didn't change that much between the Gi and no Gi game. And they played more or less the same game, 
but they just modify grips with the gi. And so I do believe there's a lot to be said for studying deeply jujitsu without the gi to learn to control the body. Yeah. And then when you get cloth put around that body and you know how to use it and manipulate it, the game just gets easier. Yeah, no, and the... The well, most shocking result of Nicholas. Because, yeah, because he trained for two weeks, that's what I would say. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, know, I know people are going to freak out when I say this, but I mean, yeah. I'm, there's some pretty strong evidence. Like Nicholas yeah. literally came to Austin. He trained for Worlds yeah. for about uh, a month in the gi. Yeah. And other than that, literally 100% no, of his training the, was no gi. He got very good no gi. And then two and a half weeks before pants, he came in and said, I want to do pants. So we just did and two and a half weeks with the that's, gi on that's insane. and looked yeah. better than he ever did. Yeah, and that's the thing. He looked much better than last year. So from last year to this year, he only trained no gi pretty much. Yeah. And he looked better in like, the gi like, than like, he did uh, last according year. According to orthodoxy, he should have looked terrible. Okay. He should have come in and got killed. Like to, to put it in perspective, he fought the very, very talented um, uh, Eric Muniz. This yeah. guy, this guy yeah. is very, very talented. He just won the BJJ Star. I saw that. Yeah. He's extremely good. Now, last year when they fought at Worlds, him and Nicholas went toe to toe. Well, two matches. Two matches. They were very razor close. Yeah. Nicholas barely won one, and Eric yeah. barely won the other. Yeah. And, and you could have flipped a coin for either yeah. one. Yeah. yeah. And this time, Nicholas. Yeah. No, it was impressive. It was not very competitive. Yeah. Now, in theory, that should not have happened. I agree. It should I agree. have been Eric destroying Nicholas, because yeah. Nicholas had focused entirely on, on no I agree. training. I agree. But it wasn't. And so guys like us have to ask the question, what does that mean? Like, there's a lot to be said for learning to control the body, and then when you, and put, then doesn't when you put ropes yeah, around the stuff. body, then so Oh, and Joe, I have rolled with Gordon with Gi without expecting that he would be it's as good as he is no gi, and it's almost the same. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, uh, I think a lot of people have been yeah. shocked. Right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, no, that makes sense. But anyways, uh, guys, uh, this is the third part of the series Ages of Jiu-Jitsu from John, and it's all about the borrow game with gi. So this instruction is going to be at bjjfanatics.com very soon. Maybe by the time you're watching, it's already there, so make sure to check that out. And thanks so much, guys. Awesome. Uh, thank you, Brian. Thanks for thanks, coming. Brian. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome. Please help me out to grow my YouTube channel. Just click subscribe. And to watch more videos, just click under see more videos. I hope you enjoyed. BJJFanatics.com. Use the promo code YouTubeFaria to get 10% off any instructional video. Improve your jujitsu faster.